on uh, agri-food system, women play a crucial role in agricultural and non-agricultural activities, which emerge as agri-food systems develop and changes are generated in economies. Their women work as uh, farmers, retailers, uh, uh, wage laborers, entrepreneurs, among other tasks. However, gender inequalities in agri-food systems cause women to be disproportionately affected by food and nutrition insecurity, monetary and time poverty in, uh, in our region. In this seminar, we will discuss the progress and challenges uh, to promote or that promote or hinder the economic empowerment of rural women in Latin America and the Caribbean, highlighting good practices and promoting the development of alliances and strategies to advance gender equality in the region. To participate, you can connect through um, FAO Americas, where you will find interpretation services uh, from Spanish to English and Portuguese. You can also, during the, the event, you will be able to ask questions and offer comments uh, if, using the platforms or chat. Throughout the morning will be more of a seminar approach, and in the afternoon we'll have uh, work groups. We'll break out into groups, so uh, we will be focused on streaming uh, with uh, all our colleagues and, and women from the region. And let's begin by offering the floor and welcome Maya Takagi, who is the FAO Regional Program Leader. Thank you, Ingrid. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Let me greet each and every one, of course, but uh, uh, special greetings to our assistant uh, regional director of uh, UN, UN Women, Cecilia Alemani, the Latin American uh, women from uh, rural women, uh, Marta das Margaritas representatives, and each and every one of you, which is great to have uh, this discussion on this uh, day of uh, rural women. This uh, seminar, as I said, we would like to have a dialogue with the relevant stakeholders, uh, rural development agenda, inclusion agenda, equality agenda. And uh, in order to close the gender gaps in agri-food systems, particularly the impact of uh, economic empowerment for rural women programs we have in FAU, along with uh, our strategic uh, uh, framework 20, uh, so this is a priority program called women, uh, we, uh, uh, empowerment of rural women. And for that, we need to reinforce our message to the society for both the men and women on the importance of the concept, how to guarantee empowerment of, uh, of uh, women, especially in the rural uh, environment. There are certain concepts associated related to the whole society, but the number one as FAO, we want to offer a view in the in, the, in agriculture, but uh, beyond a be, uh, focused on primary production, which is an important uh, influence on uh, on uh, production throughout the whole chain. I believe that's that's the innovation of this strategic framework, expanding the horizon, because women act not only in primary production but throughout the whole chain transportation, transformation, processing, and consumption of uh, food items and uh, care, uh, protection of uh, goods for consumption. So this uh, system-wide uh, view expands the view of the contribution of these uh, sectors for economic uh, growth and for the reduction of 
poverty and how we can have these uh, poverty reduction and economic growth can also reduce uh, gender inequalities through a by, by, by creating uh, job opportunities development of rural communities with uh, women as uh, at the center of this process because as we already know these are this is agricultural non-agricultural activities of course which are associated to this but and this study referred to by ingrid and uh, benjamin uh, will address uh, from the uh, headquarters addresses the role of women in agriculture and the retail uh, sector as uh, employees or as uh, entrepreneurs. Now, we also know that these studies show that despite the important role in those sectors, the working conditions are not the same as those for men. Wages are lower, salaries are lower, labor conditions are not the same, are weak, and uh, and uh, care for family, the care for children, the care for the elderly, all this makes the labor conditions to be unequal compared to those of men, therefore contrition of the cultural gaps in, 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 in society, which uh, as uh, we which uh, offer a bias among men and women so to guarantee a more egalitarian part involvement or engagement we need to change agri-food system but also we need to translate uh, the meaning of uh, transforming changing this uh, agri-food system transforming changing not only increasing production productivity economics inclusion but also to guarantee um, equal conditions uh, among uh, men women uh, indigenous peoples uh, different uh, ethnicities age youth uh, elder the elderly uh, people with disabilities these inclusion disability should cover the various uh, groups in the society mainly looking at uh, those who need the more the most as FAO we have this commitment of addressing inequality in general uh, SDG 10 is at the center of the strategic framework but as uh, as the uh, among that uh, reducing inequalities means a reduction of gender inequality in different areas. Uh, we also know that having uh, uh, these aggregated data by gender show that uh, living salary conditions, uh, women there suffer food insecurity. And that's uh, those are some of the gender gaps we would like to close with the program initiatives. Uh, uh, the promoting uh, e e equality, uh, access to production uh, items such as a land, which is critical to improve the inclusion of women in decreasing inequality, promotion of the participation of women in decision making, and at all levels of uh, community, national, local, regional level and the strengthening of their technical capabilities considering their limitations and specific contexts in order to grow this inequality and uh, reach uh, our horizon of achieving inclusive and sustainable agri-food system we need to uh, promote uh, women's uh, rights uh, to improve visibility among agriculture and food uh, ag agri-food systems and for the development of our countries. So we believe that this seminar will offer perspectives and outlooks and tools to, for, to offer the visibility 
to learn about the causes of these inequalities, the factors that may contribute in order to decrease them and address them through practical actions, uh, capacity building, but also public policies, because we we need public policies to address uh, this uh, closing of uh, gender gaps, acknowledging the fundamental role of women in sustainable development by guaranteeing well-being and rights in each and every one of the actions, programs, of uh, policies or projects that we can implement. So that's my message. Thank you for being here with us today. And uh, I please uh, enjoy the day in discussions and uh, thoughts. Thank you. Muchas gracias, Maya, por ese Thank introduce. you, Maya, for your introduction. Let me welcome um, Luz Opligar. She's the specialist in uh, science and in FAO science and innovation management management specialist who will moderate the session, the dialogue session called Let's Grow Equality Initiatives for Women Empowerment in Agri Food Systems. Luz, welcome. Bueno, bienvenidas y bienvenidos a la sesión Hagamos Crecer la Igualdad, Iniciativas para el Empoderamiento de la... Session, an initiative uh, for the empowerment of women in agri-food uh, systems. In this session, we will know about uh, different groups and initiatives focusing on uh, the economic empowerment of rural women. We will begin by inviting Mrs. Mariela Bejarano, Mariela is an Argentinian woman belonging to the network Mujeres del Algodón Latinoamericano, and she will present a video and after that uh, answer a few questions. Please uh, play the video. experiences that contribute to strength to strengthening value chains uh, that are gender sensitive and uh, using resources for the strengthening of rural women working with cotton. Excellent video, muy claro. Muchas gracias. Excellent video, very clear. Mariela, now I would like to invite you to answer the following questions. What uh, strategic aspects have been fundamental so that uh, the work uh, may indeed contribute uh, to the empowerment of rural women with whom you have been able to work? 
Good morning. My name is Mariela. I come from Santiago del Estero, uh, de Loreto. I am, I coordinate a, a group of Warmes uh, Buscadora, which is a group of uh, uh, weavers. The strategic aspects that we seek are, first of all, to try to share Uh, with uh, uh, handicrafts women, and we joined the network from the very beginning. Uh, the network called Red de Mujeres Algodoneras. Uh, we work with cotton, and we also work with uh, sheep wool. We produce. Uh, uh, handicraft um, uh, and you saw the girl uh, working with uh, this uh, handicraft and uh, our first strategy was to determine how we were going to change uh, fibers and uh, through training we began um, to obtain information about that. And after that, in the network uh, Ramas, which is uh, the Argentinian network uh, for women working with cotton, uh, we organized uh, meetings, uh, national and local meetings. Uh, this uh, network is comprised of six provinces. And uh, we began to find uh, the ways uh, for them to accept uh, fiber, which was a new challenge uh, for um, handicraft uh, women. Well, obviously, key aspects are some of the key aspects are uh, is training and uh, to to bring these women together. Yes, uh, to share knowledge, because we have different uh, techniques. Uh, handicraft uh, women in. Uh, Santiago and uh, other uh, women, uh, they all have different techniques. Uh, they use different tools uh, uh, to uh, weave this. Uh, we have all the different uh, uh, links uh, from the seed to the actual piece of clothing. And we have um, families accompany each uh, organization and uh, for all of that uh, we need uh, to obtain training and that was indeed uh, the main strategy that we had uh, training and also uh, to meet uh, to come together thank you mariela and just so that we can uh, establish the size of this network how many women form part of the network well the network is comprised of 130 women and their families they are all accompanied uh, by uh, their own organizations. After that, we bring together six uh, provinces. Now we have also, also Catamarca has uh, come on board. And we also have uh, within the group, we also have organizations uh, such as cooperatives, um, family ventures. We also have a cooperative. I can't remember the name of that cooperative right now, but uh, uh, they have also joined our network and they participated in a meeting held in Santa Fe, a three-day meeting. And there we have different uh, ethnical groups uh, and Santiago del Estero Pichuist. Uh, um, we are indeed um, quite uh, numerous and we meet uh, once a year uh, but uh, in the assemblies, that is what we call them, assemblies, well, we share everything. What uh, one province needs, if a different province can provide that, uh, that is done. Uh, the main thing is communication. Working as a group is something that is helping us all. Uh, what uh, SUMAS uh, need in Buenos Aires, well, Warmis uh, can provide that. We basically support each other. We are all uh, paying attention to what it is that we want to achieve, which is that uh, each uh, group is able 
uh, to obtain what it needs. Uh, some groups uh, may need seed, other producers may have that, and well, they send uh, that, the seed to them. Others um, grow, uh, uh, grow in one way or another. We try to find the best way to grow the seeds uh, now. For example, we have uh, uh, we place uh, two crops on either side of the cotton plant, and therefore uh, we share experiences uh, in our assembly. And uh, that is when uh, we seek the support of the different groups. Yes, it's very important uh, to meet and to share knowledge. Thank you, Mariela. Now I'll ask you a second question. And it is, uh, well, what actions uh, can the states uh, undertake in order to accelerate uh, the progress of rural women empowerment uh, via initiatives uh, similar to yours? Well, at present, uh, the state, let's see, for example, we require the support of public policies. We also need... Uh, different support. For example, what uh, makes uh, our fiber and our product uh, very expensive is that is uh, the result of the fact that we don't have uh, tools in each uh, in each uh, province. Uh, for, a, for example, special tools to work with cotton that do not uh, contaminate our product. We work with Reconquista Santa Fe and everything that is planted and harvested in Santiago has to be sent uh, to Santa Fe to be processed and after that it comes back uh, to Santiago del Estero to Loreto in our case and that is uh, what uh, implies that our product is a little uh, a bit more expensive because we have to pay uh, for the transport of the product uh, to and fro and so on so it would be support and tools and resources to update uh, tools and facilitate the meetings. Yes, well, that is indeed a very important aspect. I believe that um, that is the most important part. If we had uh, the necessary tools in each uh, one of the six provinces, uh, things uh, would be a little easier for the uh, both for the producers and for handicraft uh, women workers uh, because we will we have the cotton there whenever we need it but otherwise we have to wait for that to be sent to us um, five or six days and find a cheaper way of um, receiving that so it would make uh, our production time a lot uh, shorter as well thank you i thank you for your answers <clears throat> And now we would like to welcome Isis Riquelme. She is a representative uh, of the group Las Tremendas, um, which uh, is based in Chile and is comprised of young women, uh, girls and women that uh, seek to find answers uh, to the climate uh, crisis. So welcome, Isis. You're very well accompanied. So let's uh, begin with a video prepared by Isis. Hi, I am uh, the spokesperson of the movement La Tremendas, which is a movement of uh, girls and teenagers uh, working on around the objectives of uh, sustainable development goals, uh, both in Chile and in Latin American countries. There we have programs, uh, programs such as Climatica, an academy for the empowerment of uh, young women and teenagers uh, related to the environmental crisis. We also have Crowder, which is uh, uh, works uh, in schools and universities, and we also work in environmental policy issues, uh, such as the implementation of the Escazú Agreement. Uh, there, we hope to empower women from rural areas and women uh, around uh, their tools and how to uh, to experience uh, their environmental human rights. Both, and this involves the empowerment of women and girls, and so that they become part of the decision-making space where we cannot be left uh, that we cannot be left out of. Thank you for that tremendous uh, video. 
Isis, we will begin now with a question. How is a leadership and the organizational capability of women, how does that favor the achievement of sustainability? Well, first of all, in Las Tremendas, uh, we are uh, we have more than 300 girls and teenagers in Chile and uh, 1,500 in the whole of Latin America and the Caribbean. And one of our main uh, proposals is uh, that the education of uh, girls is uh, the most effective solution when it comes to cli the climate crisis. And that is because educated girls become uh, women leaders uh, that make better decisions when it comes to the management of uh, natural resources. Uh, they are leaders in their community so that adaptation risk and resilience processes necessary to move towards uh, sustainability become concrete actions and real actions. And uh, they understand, at least uh, at least in the case of Chile, for more than 50 years now, they sent men were sent to work in forestry, in ag agri-industry, in mining, and it was women that were that provided care and managed uh, water, food, the way in which it was going to be obtained, and it, uh, and they were the first ones uh, to view the impact of uh, the contamination of the air, of water, and of food upon their families. And when they realized this, or when realizing this, most um, environmental defenders and the ones that have led uh, different processes, um, the supervision and the report of uh, malpractice are indeed women, and that is a very valuable issue because based on their experience in their relationship with nature, based on their experience in terms of deciding and, and how to bring water, sometimes uh, having to travel kilometers uh, to obtain clean water, as occurs uh, regularly in Latin America and the Caribbean, or for example, making sure that if, if they saw that if their children grew from uh, at um, agri-food industries, they became sick. Here, near the metropolitan region, there was an explosive case between the 70s and the year 2000 of people uh, that were born with uh, malformations, uh, women uh, that uh, suffered from early cancer because uh, uh, people were not aware that uh, there were contaminating uh, chemical products, uh, but it was women, peasant women's uh, seasonal workers who realized and said, uh, look, uh, this is uh, having a negative impact on us. This is contaminating and we have to go back to our uh, roots. And therefore, for us, uh, this... Uh, it, Formal education and non-formal education is highly related. Uh, educated women not only has to do with schooling, which is very important, but with the fact that most environmental education is done hands-on with our hands in the soil. And therefore, peasant women have a lot to contribute to this discussion because they understand uh, uh, a process that women in urban areas have forgotten. And today, one of the main catastrophes that we face at a global uh, level with the climate, uh, climatic uh, disaster is uh, food, um, the food crisis uh, as a result of uh, wildfires, uh, floods, uh, droughts and so on. Um, this is the first year in Chile that we received the same rainfall as we did in 2009. Uh, we have spent many years without uh, experiencing uh, rainfall until this year, at least in the central area of a country. And that has questioned uh, uh, the state uh, uh, businesses and uh, families. And it is uh, wim fa women that have resisted. And here in urban areas, uh, we have some practices uh, that uh, have involved uh, vertical um, orchards uh, that we that the school meals are produced uh, by themselves. So one of the projects uh, that we have Plan B is an uh, environmental project uh, written by me uh, with the support of many women of many environmental organizations and uh, with the support of my teachers in order to determine how we could go achieve sustainability as from schools. And there I had to travel to the countryside to learn and to learn from those schools where they do practice food sovereignty that has been forgotten in urban areas. And one of the main pillars of Plan B is to generate food sovereignty via and via um, environmental education in schools so that children can produce the food that they're going to eat and that this food is not contaminated with chemical products or with other types of problems. 
Also, something that is very relevant for us is uh, that uh, one of the ways of ensuring that women continue to lead sustainability processes is that the uh, environmental environmental crisis is something that we speak about it in schools. We are spoken about climate change uh, during uh, biology classes at schools, but this has to become a daily practice because it is women that are 14 times more vulnerable in terms of uh, dying as a result of climate change, and it is expected that by 2050 we will be the climatic uh, migrants. And in, in Chile, since 2017, we have acknowledged uh, climatic migration, which is uh, people from Monte Patria. And in you know, and, and if they don't have water and they have to migrate from the north to the south, uh, they have also suffered uh, sexual abuse, uh, uh, situations of poverty. If they had food in their past and animals uh, to eat uh, today, they are facing poverty where that type of thing is unsustainable. And that means uh, that we have to see where we have to find help for example, in school education, where we are taught uh, that one of the main tools, and this was the initiative of my school and that we implemented, is that we were taught uh, tools uh, to for the mitigate, mitigation, adaptation and resilience, and that we could talk about climate change and environmental aspects, not only in biology classes, but also in history. In mathematics, instead of abstract uh, uh, statistics, maybe discuss uh, climate change, uh, cli uh, temperature increase, uh, uh, gender inequality. But this in the urban, this is just starting in the urban areas, but in the rural areas, and like this last summer in Santa Juana, forest fires, there were five schools that were, uh, that were affected and, and, and women and, and, and rural women and girls, those are the fist in the first in dying and the losing and there was support condition and today we have the floods in june and 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 august and uh, it's not only more uh, clim uh, climate migration those are to be acknowledged they lost their schools and they now in the family uh, houses uh, uh, while they build their emergency housing but the problem is a pl it's a planning. We have communities in the middle of the forestry plantation without um, firewalls. There are no safeguards, but uh, we should be part of the discussion. Today, we only have 17% of uh, water management and only 35% of the ownership of land. We are owners but we don't really know if they are really managing those uh, that land so we need support we need education from school uh, we also need policies for policies to be part of the discussion we don't need more privilege of education but uh, we have to uh, care for the girls that uh, suffer these uh, difficulties this shows climate crisis uh, and how bad it is, how it affects and whom it affects, uh, and women and, uh, and girls. What aspect, what phrase to summarize for these uh, women uh, organizational dimension? We work uh, through collaboration. The previous uh, sister uh, said it. We've always grew, work as a group and collaborating with trust. And governments are led by women are more sustainable. We know how to share our task. We know how to collaborate. And we have to continue to educate girls, which is will be the most successful measure. Collaboration in education. And uh, I have a second question for you, which is how can the private sector contribute to, contribute to growth of initiatives such as Tremendas? Uh, specific help, uh, for instance, between 10 to 15 percent of Tremendas belong to the rural area, and the main uh, main problem is access to internet, uh, care tasks, and they don't have leisure time. They're uh, working on their fields or dealing with water, or uh, help to uh, grow their uh, young brothers uh, or sisters. In, uh, in the in the in the I I was uh, I was uh, I I I gave birth at 19, but some girls they give birth at 14 or 15 years of age. So our main barrier there it's for private to build alliances, to give internet access and electronic devices for them 
to be trained and educated. It will be a great tool for Tremenda so as to increase the reach, especially in those areas that they have disasters and then they should go through thematicas uh, to uh, teach them uh, to uh, resilience to climate change and uh, 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 Walmart and, and I think that the, uh, in, uh, in, in in many areas, or they don't have uh, connections. We have people from uh, from Easter Island, but they can only connect once a month because the connection is unstable. And besides being part of a social environmental activist, I'm an entrepreneur. I have a science and technology business where we work in reducing natural disasters. We have a software called RECDI through uh, modeling and analysis with the women on uh, uh, on uh, on climate on on, um, on the different territories. We, they teach they they provide as a local knowledge, and we teach them how to address. Uh, and we worked uh, geospatial sciences, satellites, and artificial intelligence to build models that will tell us. For instance, in this house, what are all the disasters it is exposed to percentage-wise? We work with uh, uh, natural-based solutions telling us what's the most effective solution to solve these disasters. So this call is for women. When, when we are educated, we can become entrepreneurs. And this is the last link. I mean, creating solutions, and that's why education is so necessary. Uh, I, I went through this environmental climate the development uh, education, sharing experiences, and that's why I'm an entrepreneur. I have the capabilities and I have, and I know the people I can work with. The software is for working with agri-food system. We tell uh, agri-food companies or businesses how to reduce and mitigate risks, but working with communities in the territories. There is exposure and uh, the exposure of the business and the communities. That's why they have to work together. So the private can contribute economically to the tools, but the private sector, from the startup, uh, we can provide solutions required in the agri-food system for any problem we can have vis-a-vis -vis the climate crisis. Excellent answer, Isis. So Isis says that privates could help improving connectivity, right? Digitization connectivity to empower uh, young women. And uh, um, I, I would like to see and learn about your uh, your your startup. I will I will delve into that. And thank you. Let me add, just add that we work so that other young women can build their own projects around uh, SDGs. That's probably one of the most valuable things about Tremendas. We act together. We're also part of public policies. We pushed for ESCASU uh, treaty. We are in the implementation uh, discussion. So uh, we're building these solutions. Uh, and so that uh, education, entrepreneurship, and innovation, and uh, we also have collaboration with public and private uh, stakeholders. This is a key alliance. And most problems of communities are not are, are not because of us or because of uh, the private sector. So we need to discuss with them what measures to adopt with communities so as to avoid fires and 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 floods here in Chile. And we have to sit down and discuss with the government, the state for them to change tools, for instance, education, more funds uh, for rural women or indigenous women, so as to promote this. Because one thing I wanted to say before I go, is there are certain practices that did affect the country. The mega industrial fishing affected the uh, algae collectors and and and. and uh, so we need uh, in the next uh, seven years, in the next seven years, these type of uh, sustainable, profitable uh, jobs, we do, we do not create overpopulation that share uh, their the, the, the work uh, with other with the rest of the territory. Let's continue to be promoted. As you can see, these Atlas Tremendas are really powerful. Uh, visit their website. They do. They work at in different areas of knowledge, and they have a, a very international uh, reach. Thank you. Thank you for coming. 
And now we will have uh, the third group. This is a different group, uh, four women. Please uh, join us. Kate Farmer, Carmen Garrido, Winnie Walbum, and uh, Paulina Castro. Se trata de cuatro mujeres huerteras. Las cuatro mujeres huerteras. Uh, and then they, uh, they have a series of initiatives uh, to uh, develop uh, food sovereignty. Uh, welcome, you all. From left to right, we have Paulina, Carmen, Winnie, and Kate. How are you? Good. También vamos a comenzar con el video que nos prepararon. We'll start with a video from uh, Cuatro Huertas. Cuatro Huertas es un podcast entre cuatro amigas Cuatro Huertas es un podcast entre cuatro amigas whose focus is to recover our relationship with nature, with our territories, with our land, and to share what uh, we are discovering through the cultivation of our food. Today we are a community in the countryside and the city we learn to grow our food and empowering ourselves to do this. We have created a small platform for education, interaction, and inspiration that seeks to motivate more people to rediscover this knowledge, often lost or forgotten, all for our benefit, not only in terms of food and health, but also emotionally, socially, and materially. We believe the nature not only uh, represents food sovereignty, but also an example of collaboration and cooperation. It is a podcast with a close language where we deal with simple and complex issues, such as the defense of the sea, the dependence on agrochemicals, and the disconnection that new generations have with nature. To our surprise, we found a community that is motivated, opinionated, want changes, and is collaborative, most importantly, in they an age tremendously respectful of each other. We hope to continue sowing seeds, knowledge, human relationships, and experiences. We'll thank our community and FAO for being here, sharing our experience. Thank you very much for that very clear video. We'll begin with a question and you will determine who answers it or you can all answer it uh, together what uh, strategic aspects in your work have been fundamental for the empowerment of rural women uh, that you have uh, had the opportunity of working with let's see the first thing is that uh, we dealt uh, with the issue of the empowerment of uh, rural women and women in general devoted uh, to growing food uh, using a podcast uh, which is uh, somewhat uh, different uh, because it's a way a platform uh, devote which uh, is uh, devoted to recreation obviously we are working with educational aspects here we are devoted to collaboration between women we are devoted uh, to teaching and uh, to summoning more people to grow their own food. But we begin with a platform that is uh, an entertainment uh, platform. And I believe that that uh, has uh, brought us uh, closer to other people. It has meant uh, that other people have wanted to participate in our meetings, in our uh, seed exchanges, uh, that they're willing to listen to different uh, viewpoints in terms of how uh, to work the land, uh, to establish a dialogue, to understand that is not there is no single way of growing food or of um, looking after the environment. And that uh, is uh, what has uh, meant uh, that uh, our community at the end of the day is a, a kind community that uh, has uh, that... Uh, uh, spirit, uh, that happy spirit in the sense uh, that change is possible. I believe that uh, all of us who know how to work the land and how to read nature know that uh, there is a marvelous uh, uh, capability for community within 
an ecosystem within the soil and within plants. And we women have a strange capacity to be intuitive in that sense, and that forms part of our nature. And uh, that is uh, what we have tried to promote as Cuatro Huertas, uh, that capability to bring forces together and to accept a balance that may be established. And that is a balance uh, that we try uh, to achieve uh, via our own work, uh, using ourselves as examples uh, to society. At least in my case, uh, that is what I was missing. I come from England, uh, where apparently there is a lot more ecological uh, education, much more respect for nature. However, uh, my surname is uh, Farm Farmer, and I was bullied uh, there uh, because of my surname. And that is a first world country, and yet uh, uh, laughing at a work uh, that is most... Uh, that is the greatest uh, work. Uh, people today don't know uh, where a lettuce comes from or how a bean grows. And therefore, we are uh, granting power to an, uh, institutions and companies uh, that uh, do not place our well-being at the center of their activities. And we also try to discuss that so that seeds uh, can come back uh, to children's hands and uh, can, can, can be placed again in the hands of people. I would say that uh, our biggest uh, struggle as Cuatro Huertas is the protection of uh, seeds and of diversity. Yes, uh, this is a podcast by uh, for four women that live in four different parts of Chile, and we all grow in uh, different uh, ways. And I believe that that has been very important in the podcast uh, to teach uh, that uh, many different toolboxes are necessary and that there are many that are extremely valid and uh, the respect uh, for others' uh, toolkits. Basically, I believe that the four uh, grow in a different manner. We have uh, different ideas, uh, but there is something that brings us together and that uh, enables us to produce this podcast together. Uh, seeds, as you said, uh, respect for seeds and respect uh, for the soil, for the land. Uh, and uh, if we talk about uh, sustainability uh, in rural women and in women in general, and uh, when we talk uh, for responsible people that grow food, I believe that if there is no, there are no uh, free seeds and uh, live uh, lands, live soil, there will simply be no sustainability. And that is what we uh, try to do uh, whilst we laugh uh, uh, and while we chat to each other. At the same time, we deal with very complex issues uh, using a very simple language so that more people can join us. And I believe that those two things are sacred for us. Uh, for us, what has been very important is to establish a community to bring women together again so that they can all establish uh, their own local networks and thus exchange seeds and uh, knowledge. Uh, there is a difference uh, when it comes to the knowledge of land and of growing food. And we are uh, opening up access to that. There is no generational change in rural areas today. People simply don't want to stay out uh, in rural areas. Uh, children are much more interested in the television and in video games than in sowing seeds. Uh, but we are working on that, empowering women, empowering mums, empowering girls and women. That is uh, Cuatro Huertas. I thank you for your answer. It's important to establish uh, networks in territories wherever we may be. So thank you very much. I would, I would like to invite uh, everyone uh, to have a look at uh, the Cuatro Huertas uh, podcast. Uh, you can download it free of charge. It's... Uh, it involves a diversity of uh, themes, and I have really enjoyed it. And, and a second question now. Uh, what do you need in order to escalate uh, an initiative such as uh, your own initiative? What do you require? Well, as uh, mentioned uh, by my other colleagues, uh, the community is uh, fundamental. The system is... For me, 
uh, the system is uh, mistaken. For example, uh, I will talk about uh, my experience here in Chile. Uh, programs such as uh, the Huerto Initiative do not form part of educational programs. Uh, this is being applied for other programs uh, where Let's see, where they provide resources in November or December. We cannot begin uh, to plan to when children are leaving school. And so there is uh, something very wrong uh, there. And also the work of women. Uh, women want the children to leave rural areas. Uh, they don't feel that they're task is uh, valued in financial terms, so they don't feel that their work is valued uh, at home either. And therefore, for me, the work that we have been doing is Cuatro Huertas is the acceptance. And it's like saying, well, let's move ahead. Let's believe in what we're doing. And for me, at a personal level, that has meant a great change. And I look at this in a commune in Paiwan, which involves uh, 5,000 inhabitants, a small commune, and mainly rural workers there. If we come together with empathy, with acceptance, and with the idea of let's move ahead, I believe that we can indeed make uh, changes. Thank you, Kate. But specifically, what do you feel is necessary in order to escalate uh, this initiative by escalating you refer to our us and our own initiative or to replicate uh, this uh, initiative what conditions uh, favor uh, initiatives such as uh, your own initiative at a communicational and educational level as, as a group Let's see. I think it's important to highlight what Kate has said, uh, the educational issue. What EC said, uh, the educational aspect is uh, very important. Um, and uh, not only talking about the education of children in schools, uh, but the education of their mothers. Often women feel undermined or they feel that their experience is not uh, sufficiently important or is not such a major contribution compared uh, uh, to the agricultural advisor that uh, uh, helps communities. No, we must empower women as from their own experience. Uh, rural women, as from when they were children, have learned uh, to do what they do, and they're incredible at that. In addition to that, they're head of households. They look after their children. They cook. They are tremendously powerful, and that is what we must make uh, mums understand and uh, also make uh, their children understand uh, who are uh, uh, women, ex uh, super powerful women. And the best place uh, where they should be is in their own communities. And here in Cuatro Huertas, uh, our dream is uh, to reach uh, the largest number of people, of women, as possible. And how to, and one way of achieving this. Well, I think we want to do this, but but how to reach uh, farther? I was thinking of an educational tour, for example, by Cuatro Huertas. I have to tell you that uh, talking, uh, referring to what Isis uh, is saying, I have no internet uh, or telephone uh, signal in Paiwano. Uh, so it was very difficult to record this podcast. They're so very basic uh, things, but uh, we... Uh, so connectivity, for example, would be a very good idea. Yes, connectivity and tools uh, to reach uh, farther, because our dream is to educate, to empower. Let's see. I'm trying to find the right word, but I've forgotten. Uh, we are always very informal uh, in the way we speak because we're accustomed uh, to this uh, podcast, which is very human, uh, which is very lively. It's not uh, really very institutionalized. Uh, 
Well, I thank you all, all our presenters. I thank you for your task. And please continue to develop uh, more podcasts uh, for all of us. And I invite you all uh, to enjoy this uh, together with the uh, smiles of Cuatro Huertas. Uh, well, we're happy to collaborate with the FAO. If you want to send us to the different corners of the Americas uh, to educate and empower more rural women. And now we have um, a space uh, for questions and answers uh, for each uh, participant. Isis, tenemos una pregunta para ti. Isis, uh, we have a question for you. Can you please come to the front? If, if climate change is inevitable, how does this impact women? If climate change is inevitable, how it impacts uh, women? Well, we, what is highly documented is both contamination and uh, the climate crisis and its effect upon women. As I mentioned, there are studies that date back to 2010, 2015 that mentioned that disasters, uh, in disasters, those that most are women because uh, they are performing care tasks, because they did, weren't educated to know how to respond to such emergencies, or because they were with uh, the elderly or with people with a disability looking after them. And um, those that die in wildfires in Chile are either uh, in the elderly, both men and women, and uh, disabled uh, women or mothers uh, that were looking after their children. And despite the fact that it is not a climate disaster, what hit uh, uh, Chile very hard was the 27th of February when uh, 525 people were killed in a in, uh, as a result of a tsunami in the island of Constitución, and they were women that were camping with their children. Most of them decided to stay there. And despite the fact that they could swim, perhaps, they decided to stay there looking after their children, and that is why they were killed. Because basically it is a responsibility, but it is also a barrier. And if we don't provide the state uh, tools, uh, protocols, for example, we know here in Chile what the protocols are for earthquakes, but what to do in a rural area faced with a, a flood, with a landslide, with a fire, that is uh, local knowledge uh, that is uh, transferred uh, to, from families uh, to families. Uh, but we don't have official protocols because in small communities, uh, most people work there for the same uh, large uh, farm or the same large industry in the south of Chile between Bio Bio and La Araucanía for forestry companies. And so all those uh, companies and the state should provide capabilities to tell women exactly what to do. Climate change is inevitable. It will continue to worsen. And we know that the effects are long lasting today. We are uh, suffering the contamination of 20 years ago. And what we're doing now is something that we will suffer from in the future. And that is on the increase. And in addition uh, to being... Uh, the ones uh, that die, we are the ones that uh, live in poverty. Today, we represent 70% of the poor, uh, women uh, and uh, teen and uh, girls. And that will increase if we don't provide capabilities. And that is why for me and for Tremendas, what is very important is education, be it uh, state, uh, public education, formal education, or the uh, education that can be provided by the private sector as uh, who are, a, in many cases, very responsible for disasters. They must provide tools uh, to educate people living in their uh, uh, surroundings, uh, uh, solutions based on nature, community solutions in order to reduce and mitigate this risk. Uh, today, one of the key aspects is uh, the reduction of uh, the risk of disasters. We know that we're in the front line. And the second line, I believe, is the issue of food uh, sovereignty. Today, what we eat and what we drink uh, is important. Uh, uh, over the past 30 years, cancer has been on the increase and there are many children and women uh, that develop cancer. But at the same time, there are atmospheric uh, studies uh, that uh, uh, support uh, the idea that the increase of the contamination of water and of air uh, leads to an increase in cancer. And therefore, we must say that what we eat and what we drink is important. And along those lines, uh, air is increasingly contaminated. There are studies that mention that 99% of the air on the planet is contaminated in some areas more than others. In Chile, the areas of environmental sacrifice, as they are known, have such a uh, contamination that children are, are born with all kinds of uh, malformations and problems. And uh, there are are more uh, 
natural abortions. Uh, uh, we need uh, the state to have more rigorous policies, and f and we need uh, the the contamination standards in Chile to be uh, much uh, tougher in Chile. Uh, those standards are very low, and that is why we face the situation that we face in the sacrifice areas and in the urban, uh, the metropolitan region. I believe that it is uh, elementary to create uh, capacities uh, to provide resources to increase uh, the financing for the training of uh, women and girls. Uh, and especially in rural areas, because uh, they are in the front line in the struggle against climate change, uh, the protection of nature, and the first ones uh, to die. So that is a key element. And this resilience and this adaptation is not only cannot only be obtained from the state, but also from the private sector, because in Chile, the private uh, sector has a lot of power. And so they need uh, uh, to train uh, communities and adopt these measures. And if the environmental impact study says they have to do this and that, they must uh, comply with that so that these communities are not faced to what we face this year. Today, what happened in Lincoln 10 in Santa Cruz or in Santa Juana was not by chance, because uh, for me, there are no natural risks. Uh, this is a socio-natural exposure, and this exposure increases in Chile because the private sector didn't adopt uh, the necessary measures, and nor did, did the state, and communities uh, pay for that. If 88% of the uh, fresh water in Chile is used by the private sector, so if you have to, you have to monitor its business, how they use, how they pollute the, agua, the, the water. And uh, the uh, water authority responsible for the use of water in Rancagua, there are two persons for, for inspecting the whole region. So where do we need resources? That's the place. Where to add resources? The ESCASU implementation um, plan, the only one guaranteeing protection of, uh, of uh, environmental defendants. Uh, one of the Lorena Donaire, they, they burned their house down. Indigenous Macarena Valdez and Nicolás Aquintre, and they were killed, and they uh, they were murdered. And so we need a protocol before the end of the year. Escazú was uh, was passed last year. We need a protocol, and we need money for the implementation of Escazú. And this implementation has to consider women or gender, but we don't have money in Latin America. We don't have money here in Chile. So if we ratify agreements and we implement policies which are very quite necessary, valuable tools, we need money available from the public or from the private sector for United Nations for implementation and not just uh, a presentation or a workshop, but we need an effective implementation tools that we can use. Thank you, Isis. Uh, thank you for your powerful answer. Are, las tremendas are really powerful. Thank you. And uh, we have a second question for Mariela. Mariela, please uh, join us here. From your work as a, as a craftswoman, is this the way to improve the interest of rural women? What is it that it's needed? Well, yes, for us, for uh, uh, craft women, crafts women, this is the way to make them visible. When uh, the other sisters were talking before, that's what happens. I mean, uh, all the previous girls, all of us uh, are going through that situation in Santiago del Estero, water. Like Isis said, the orchards got difficult tomorrow. But we are here to talk about cotton. Also, it's difficult for cotton. And on Las Termas, on Figueroa, we have uh, technicians uh, working with the families, and that's it's difficult. It's quite challenging for us. Offer visibility, uh, our. Uh, our uh, Crafts women, it's the best thing we can do. Finding, meeting, sharing, supporting, working as a group for us is the best because uh, we are used to do so. We're used to share with uh, craftsmen from uh, craft from, from 
Argentina, for other provinces, uh, local crafts, uh, crafts women, crafts men, but uh, for you to uh, learn about our work, that is uh, a huge contribution in every aspect. In our case, the the, the women uh, are are uh, responsible for their houses. Husbands, uh, they they go and do other uh, tasks, other jobs. Our our women do. They care for their their households, their families. So this is important. Uh, this is really important. And we are doing so with our network. We uh, get together. We agree on prices. Craftswomen, which were not valued, now they are visible through this uh, network and this connectivity thing. We are doing this step by step. They don't have signal, but they, 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 they uh, in Santiago del Estero, we don't have hills like you have here, and they have to climb a tree. The corners, uh, we have, we have uh, an area in every corner in a, in a big box, a chest, uh, they have to climb this to get a signal. But through the network, we are making. Uh, uh, we, I live in Loreto, so they go to my place or in the South Cesolo. We have uh, a little Wi Fi signal, not too much, but we, we are doing it. Uh, uh, your, your past stories, I mean, this is, this is all true for us, for all of us. And thank you for offering the visibility to rural women that um, are are being uh, economically empowered thanks to the our network uh, looking for a fair just price thank you mariela for your deep uh, and clear and honest uh, answer well we have had a wonderful session quite inspi inspiring I'd like to thank all six uh, women that join us today. But let me uh, go back to Ingrid Zabaleta. Muchas gracias. Creo que fue bien thank you. It's a really interesting uh, 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 reflections. Uh, you all speak on behalf of many other women working and living out there in the countryside. We have uh, had a uh, very inspiring session. And uh, with that, I'd uh, like to offer the floor to both Maya and, uh, and myself. I uh, made reference to uh, FAO report on the women's situation. And now we will have a, a discussion for Latin America and the Caribbean on the women's situation in agri-food systems. For that, we will have uh, Mr. Benjamin Davis, uh, who is the director of FAO's Inclusive Rural Transformation and Gender Equality Division, who will present some reflections uh, for Latin America and the Caribbean on the situation of women in agri-food systems. Uh, thank you, Benjamin. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me okay? Quite low. Still too low? Now it's better. Now it's better. Okay. Referirles que el chat a las personas que están conectadas en online. Chat, but for, for those who are in the online session, is still open. So we will be taking your comments and questions. And um, back to you, Benjamin. Uh, welcome. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for your kind invitation today. And this, this is such an important day. And uh, 
Um, I'm a disadvantage uh, after listening to your experiences in the previous session. Um, very inspiring. Let me switch gears and offer a, a more macro view and uh, an analysis uh, based on statistics and other studies on the situation of women in agri-food systems around the world. But focusing on the Reunify May, I will be sharing uh, my presentation I hope you can see it is it okay now can you see it okay can't, now, yeah, now we see the presentation. Thank you. What I would like to address is are the main challenges of uh, gender in uh, agri-food systems in uh, Latin America and the Caribbean. We will offer a macro, I will, I will offer a, a macro statistical view of the situation. As I said, early agri-food systems are a key source of uh, job for employment for men and women in the world and in the region worldwide over 36 percent of women working uh, that are working on uh, agri-food systems together with 38 percent of men in latin america and the caribbean uh, number is a bit lower, 25% uh, of women and 34% uh, of men working are employed in the agri-food system. In the first two columns, so you see the numbers for, for men and women in Latin America and the Caribbean and then the sub-regions. A very important difference uh, for Latin America compared to the rest of the world is that the most uh, work in non-agricultural uh, activities in the agri-food system and 71% 70, of women compared to 44% uh, of men. That's the orange color. In, for, in Central America, uh, an even greater percentage work in the non-agricultural sector, 84% uh, versus 43% of men. And that compared to uh, the, the global number where both men and women work, uh, or they work mostly on agriculture. However, share of women in uh, Agricultural livestock activities has increased in the region. That's the only region where we have seen such an increase. And this is related to uh, prevalence of uh, male emigration, male migration. Women have more probabilities to have a vulnerable job compared to men. And in Latin America and the Caribbean, 80% of women in agriculture work in vulnerable activities of self-employment compared to 56% of men. In terms of non-agricultural employment in agri-food uh, systems in Latin America and the Caribbean, only 50% of women work in exchange for a salary or as employers compared to 76% in the case of men. So again, women do work, and uh, but in general, they are in a much more vulnerable condition compared to men. In addition, women obtain less productivity and earn less uh, for the same work. We conducted a study 
where we studied uh, three countries, Guatemala, Nicaragua, and Peru, and uh, in terms of the difference of productivity of the land between um, operations of the same size managed by women and men is 24%. In other words, women are 24% less productive uh, in the same uh, plot uh, of uh, land. And on average, women earn 82 cents for each dollar earned by men in uh, paid uh, employment in agriculture. Uh, uh, we studied uh, Colombia and also other countries in the world. And what we found in this study is that discrimination explains uh, to a large extent uh, uh, salary differences and uh, productivity differences in agri-food systems. Discrimination is a result of that, or results in that. And one of the important elements when it comes to gender inequalities between men and women is uh, inequalities in uh, domestic work and in non uh, uh, paid uh, care work uh, that limited uh, employment opportunities uh, for women. As you can see in the graph, uh, the women in Latin America and the Caribbean devote on average, and this compared to men, of course, uh, for each hour that men work, uh, women devote in our region devote uh, 1.62 hours in Cuba and up to 7.25 hours in Guatemala. So in the case of Guatemala, seven times uh, uh, more in uh, terms of uh, domestic work uh, compared to paid uh, work uh, by men. Men also have a large amount of property and greater protection uh, about the rights of land than women. Uh, the graph, as you can see, is very explicit. Uh, the vertical axis is the percentage of uh, men that own agricultural land or uh, and on the horizontal, you find uh, the percentage of women. As you can see in practically all countries, in the four countries of Latin America uh, studied uh, here, uh, it is primarily men that uh, own the land. In addition, the protection of uh, women's uh, right, of the rights of women's uh, to land is low in uh, all countries uh, in the region. And that also as a result of uh, SDG indicators. Uh, también, otro factor importante son los niveles inaceptables de violencia. Contra and also, uh, when it comes to unacceptable levels of violence uh, against, uh, against women, you can see on the left-hand side the percentage of women that have suffered sexual violence, and on the right-hand side, uh, those that have suffered uh, physical violence. And uh, the percentages are very important. Uh, this is Latin America, the three countries in Latin America uh, that uh, show the incidence of uh, uh, physical violence. Or, uh, and uh, we, we find that at least 20 or 30 percent of women have suffered or claim to have suffered um, physical violence. In uh, the FAO, we have also conducted studies on uh, the con gender contents uh, within agricultural policies. And what we find is that in Latin America, uh, most of the policies that were analyzed uh, include uh, measures uh, to tackle gender inequalities. But those measures are very general in nature. For example, they do not include implementation strategies. And therefore, this color in green is the percentage uh, that uh, contain a certain amount of measures. Uh, but uh, uh, generally, they are not uh, very specific. In addition, a considerable number of policies uh, still don't take uh, um, uh, gender into account uh, whatsoever. And it is this one here in uh, brown, or do not uh, propose uh, a single measure to deal with uh, gender inequality. And so most uh, have uh, no or very little that is specific uh, when it comes uh, to gender policies uh, or gender inequality in uh, agri-food um, uh, policies, and in the region, only 25% of the policies include uh, gender equality as an explicit uh, political objective. Uh, gender violence and its impact uh, for uh, agricultural development uh, are not dealt with in when it comes to agricultural policies and less than 25% uh, consider or deal with discriminatory gender, social regulations or climate change and resilience uh, faced with catastrophes. Uh, 
In addition, uh, sensitivity, adaptation mechanisms, and uh, resilience to shocks and uh, stress factors are influenced uh, by gender inequality. And, uh, the, uh, s s and there are many dimensions of this. Uh, for example, here we see uh, COVID-19, where we show that 23% of women lost uh, their employment in agri-food systems uh, versus or compared to 15% percent of men between 2019 and 2020. In addition, COVID and its impact in the region, well, uh, this is uh, the region where this had, had uh, the greatest impact upon food security and in terms of the gender gap. And uh, you can see in the figure that uh, the gap between men and women increased uh, from 6.4 percentage points to 11.5 percentage points between 2019 and 2021, and it was reduced uh, to 9.1 percentage points in 2022. And we can also see that those gaps are also important in South America and in Central America. Uh, Concluding then, what are some of the key aspects in order to deal with uh, gender inequalities in agri-food systems? Well, first of all, what is important or what is fundamental is to increase uh, gender equality and uh, the empowerment of women. Uh, that is essential for their well-being. And that is also based on studies uh, that have been conducted, uh, especially in other in the countries of the region. There are many of the few of these studies in Latin America, but these studies have shown that uh, there is a positive impact upon uh, agricultural production, upon food security, upon the diet and uh, children's uh, nutrition. We need to deal with uh, discriminatory social regulations uh, because that is fundamental in order to do away with uh, gender inequality in agri-food systems. Uh, we need to um, case studies uh, show how this uh, gender approach uh, can lead uh, to changes in uh, social regulations, uh, social regulations related to the participation of women in agriculture, it improves the self-esteem of women and their negotiation capacity with uh, their um, spouses, uh, the increase of uh, decision-making capacity of women in households and access uh, to revenues uh, obtained uh, from commercial crops uh, and to strengthen the role of women in fishing, in uh, livestock and in forestry, a more equitable share of resources and an increase of women's young women's capacity to become the owners of a business and to decide upon the use of those revenues. What is also a fundamental aspect, uh, in the introduction I heard Maya uh, spoke about this in terms of having an intersectional approach uh, around uh, all these initiatives. And uh, what is fundamental uh, is uh, to not only consider gender, but also dimensions uh, such as age, ethnic origin, health, uh, uh, disability, socioeconomic status, uh, uh, and uh, civil and migration data that are all combined to create different uh, modes of discrimination and privilege. And we need to certainly consider that when we deal with these types of policies. Uh, another a key aspect uh, in terms of policies that are, that is very, that are very important and the conclusions that we obtained is that gender approach, uh, transformative uh, gender approaches are profitable and may change uh, social regulations, uh, can uh, bridge uh, the gaps in terms of the ownership of land and has benefits for employment, investment, the management of natural resources, access to services, resilience, um, food security and uh, gender violence access to formal kindergarten services have a positive impact upon employment and the revenues of mothers in agri-food systems. And uh, group approaches are also important in order to increase the empowerment and resilience. And uh, finally, social protection may increase uh, the employment of women and improve resilience. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Benjamin, for that excellent uh, uh, 
presentation. I believe that that data is increasingly or increasingly necessary. Every time I read this uh, report, I am left with that 25% uh, of explicit policies for rural women. That is something that uh, is very surprising for me, among uh, many other data. And with this, we will now offer uh, the floor for a Q&A session, benefiting from the fact that Benjamin is here. And so the microphone is open. And likewise, uh, you can ask your questions in writing using the chat. Well, the first question that we have here in the chat, Benjamin, let's see, you have um, mentioned in this report uh, the work on gender uh, regulations and the importance of working with these regulations. How do you deal with this in communities where there is uh, a very explicit uh, um, male chauvinism? Uh, uh... Um, Let's see, I would say that, that there are colleagues that probably know more than me, but a fundamental point, I believe, is to work with young, uh, with men and young men in the community so that they become part of the process uh, of uh, facing up to those uh, social regulations, because at the end of the day, uh, those uh, social regulations derive from the social uh, structure, but it is uh, men, uh, young men and young children that uh, uh, learn uh, and adopt uh, these uh, social regulations. Uh, so a, um, a fundamental focus is that this is a task for the family as a whole, for all family members, uh, so that they may participate in the process of uh, implementing this. What is also important is that this uh, be dealt with uh, as a part of the policies that include many of these aspects. It's important uh, not only not to always uh, focus on access uh, to assets or economic aspects, uh, but uh, uh, to in a coordinated manner, face up to, to these uh, social issues uh, that uh, not only include the importance of having more assets, uh, but also the context in which uh, this happens and uh, social regulations have an important impact uh, there. Thank you, Benjamin. Undoubtedly, we have to work and uh, place uh, men uh, to work around these objectives because at the end of the day we're talking about a rela relational aspect. Uh, the gender perspective always includes uh, these uh, two factors. Questions uh, from the floor? I see. I see. I see. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ben, for this presentation. I believe that many of the figures uh, are uh, very striking and i would like to ask about uh, the productivity gap uh, that is mentioned undoubtedly uh, we have been extremely uh, shocked uh, by that and so i would like to ask uh, about the elements uh, that uh, lead to these gaps or that produce these gaps and uh, perhaps uh, some aspects that are not uh, measured uh, directly via these uh, productivity uh, measurements that also refer to the contribution of uh, women uh, in rural areas. So how we can look at these figures in terms of the elements uh, that explain these differences, but also acknowledging perhaps uh, elements uh, that uh, refer to the productivity of women in other spaces that are not uh, directly included in these measurements. That's a good question. We try to put a number to these uh, productivity gaps. That's why we have to be very specific as to what uh, we have to be very specific in, in, in data collection for, for production activities. That's why we focused on land productivity, labor productivity, and uh, 
differences in payment, which is not necessarily productivity, but shows uh, the systematic gaps in terms of returns. And what we did was to, to what there might be differences between uh, men and women in terms of uh, land access, uh, access to to education, formal education, uh, or other aspects in terms of uh, of uh, uh, training at 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 home age. So there are certain characteristics, uh, individual characteristics, and we try to distinguish the, the differences between men and women. Uh, other factors which cannot be explained, which is a technique that, which has been used uh, for 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 quite some time. It's called the Oaxaca blinder. And what cannot be attributed to, to uh, factors of differences in, in, in people, it's attributed to the context. And in this context, it's just uh, discrimination, the way people are treated uh, differently in, in, in terms of uh, what they receive services uh, they have access to and so on and so forth so uh, and in both cases um, the uh, salary gap as, uh, as well as a productivity gap the bulk of the difference is accounted for by discrimination there's a curious thing that uh, women own less land and uh, men uh, of course own more land and curiously enough just because of this women are more productive because, uh, small vendors uh, tend to be uh, more productive than bigger uh, suppliers and despite of that as, uh, in, in the other factors uh, women are still less productive again mostly explained uh, for by the, the, the social discrimination so and, and there are many other dimensions i would say as you, you suggest in terms of productivity or also the uh, labor uh, women have uh, much stronger limitations uh, compared to men's because of uh, inequality in uh, in the house household tasks and uh, care activities and those are uh, critical factors that prevent the full contribution of women in agricultural and non-agricultural uh, activities in the rural environment. Thank you. Thank you, Benjamin. We have lots of questions, actually, which is great. So let's try to be brief in asking so that we can uh, all have uh, the opportunity to participate. La duda que yo tengo es, My question is whether if we know that the rural women practice is a great solution of climate change, how, how can states promote this by injecting resources to continue to train them, to increase the flow of unemployed rural, urban women to uh, move them to coastal or rural areas? It's just political will, I believe, more than anything. It's just political will of, of uh, states, uh, public agencies, uh, recognizing the disadvantages uh, women face uh, in, in different dimensions, uh, adopting the necessary measures to, to, to realize this potential. That's just political will. Um, in terms of a cont contributing to sustainability, well, that's again a function that that's a public function. That uh, this is a public good that uh, we have to we all have 
to face with the strength of a people's uh, uh, involvement, but also with the support of the public uh, sector. And honestly, it's just political will to me. The uh, techniques and then the practical things to do are uh, quite uh, known. We have to look at creativity, innovation, and new techniques, but there are many basic things that we can go ahead and do. And uh, I believe it's just a uh, it uh, function of uh, political will. Uh, we have other questions here from the audience. Thank you. And good morning, everyone. I was uh, listening at the end of the presentation by Benjamin. He was speaking about security. 70 years ago in Ecuador, or 60 years in Ecuador, we have the social uh, farmers uh, insurance, uh, which helps uh, far, uh, farming uh, uh, families uh, led by uh, the uh, uh, home uh, uh, parents. And, and can FAO tell us how many countries in Latin America and the Caribbean have these access and service? for farmers and uh, from them, how many women access to these uh, uh, benefits? Because in, in Ecuador is not covering uh, most of our farmers. And of course, not even women, but women because they are left aside because they say that we do other things uh, uh, because we do community work and, uh, and activism. But how many countries have these uh, soft sort of protection of those uh, people in those uh, most distant and remote places in Latin America and the Caribbean. Thank you. Uh, it's a great question because um, rural populations uh, working in the informal sector, which is uh, farmers and uh, and uh, rural workers are basically informal. They they they. They, they are not part of the social security system. And uh, we use uh, many social assistance uh, program. But the exact numbers, uh, I don't know uh, specific uh, data, but probably someone from the regional social protection group that may offer more accurate information because I don't have it. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Ben. Good morning, everyone. Uh, the data on uh, household work uh, for women. There was a, I was surprised between Cuba and Guatemala, 1.62 in Cuba and 7.5 in Guatemala. Now, whether in your study, did you find then any? Association, any link between this uh, lower number of hours uh, on uh, home uh, work? Is there any relationship in Cuba, for instance, between a greater uh, education and economic uh, participation and a lower gender-based uh, gaps, whether they have uh, access to uh, uh, formal uh, jobs which are less vulnerable, unlike other countries? Because that, I believe, it's, it's really interesting and really powerful difference. I, I didn't know about that. So if you have some information on that, I will very much appreciate it. This is a great question because this is, I believe, one of the most important uh, pieces of data, uh, uh, which... Uh, account which account for the differences between men and women, but I don't have the the numbers to prove uh, everything you say. Uh, I am just assuming that the the the, the result of uh, countries were less differences is that there is more involvement. Uh, more engagement of women in the in, in economy. I don't know if, if a formal jobs, but in uh, in uh, economic activity. So this study, this is this is this is study we took from other sources, and I'm 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 looking I'm I'm looking uh, as we speak in the book uh, to to whether there are more 
our differences. But I, I believe that's the that's the essence uh, uh, which requires um, more um, more uh, research. I I I I I have the just just this data, but I don't have uh, further evidence. Let me take the opportunity for the panel because there are several questions in the chat pod. I guess this question is within the context of post-COVID because it relates to the loss of jobs. If you could elaborate on that, what has been the situation in the region for, for rural women and what country was uh, mostly affected by these uh, lost uh, jobs due to COVID? Benjamin? Yeah, I, I thought I thought the question was for the other for the other ladies. No, no, no. This is for you. It's a chatbot question as to the lost jobs uh, in the rural context. What has been this situation? I believe this is in the COVID or post-COVID context, and what countries? have been uh, mostly affected uh, or most severely affected by this this lost jobs situation i mean we've all seen uh, that and what covid uh, meant uh, was very unequal impact in many dimensions we all know that uh, as, I, as i've shown women have uh, are more, more vulnerable. They tend to work more part-time. And uh, they uh, are paid less. But in, uh, in the economic crisis, though, they are the first in losing their jobs and uh, given the social standards. They tend to play the role of going back home to take care of family. The children were not going to school during COVID, as well as uh, the, 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 the burden of diseases, of course. The first uh, being of, of, of losing their jobs and, 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 and at the social standards with this idea that women should look after their children and the ill, well, they all contribute to have to this uh, greater impact on these uh, numbers. Thank you. Back to the room. I have. Uh, I'm from Bolivia. I was asking what has been the effect. Of, I. I mean, we still need more information. What's the exact uh, effect? on women during uh, COVID. Bolivia, we, we are always, we always, un we understand uh, a cosmovision, the argue. Back then, during COVID, Bolivia was uh, offered solidarity. One, Vaccines were not in Bolivia yet. Those who had money could get access to vaccines. We suffered uh, uh, a coup. Uh, so the vaccines were not fast. Those who had the money, those who could afford it, could afford it. But our grandparents have fought and they know the natural medicine technology. So Bolivia went for those natural uh, medicines produced by our land. So with that, uh, we use that as a defense line. Now, who were affected um, in the cities where our children work, our relatives work? For instance, in Bolivia has a tourism uh, spot, which is Titicaca Lake neighboring uh, peru so we are uh, how um how have we how did we help those working in hotels the 
community. They brought products to share. How? That, that's the solidarity we offer to those brothers and sisters that had nothing. A hotel working, uh, people working as a, as a waiter or... Uh, we had young people from the city, but they had nothing. Uh, they, so they sold their cell phones. They, 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 and 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 that was not enough. But the community took uh, took ownership of the situation, and they contributed with uh, food because we still keep our products, ecological products. So that has been uh, that has been shared with those that uh, had nothing to eat. So back then, workers were they mostly were 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 women. Those workers, women, and they were all affected. Thank you. Thank you. We know that there is a lot to, to ask. And uh, this dialogue has uh, gathered uh, a lot of force, but we will have a long uh, working day and there will be uh, scope for, for further dialogue this afternoon. So please uh, keep your questions uh, for later. And uh, we would thus uh, conclude this uh, first uh, part of the event. And for that, I would like to invite uh, Claudia, Claudia Brito, is a, a, a policy officer, expert in gender and, so, and uh, social and institutional systems. And by the way, thank you very much, uh, Benjamin. We, uh, with Benjamin, your, your presentation has led uh, to a lot of debate, so we thank you for that. Thank you, Ben. Uh, greetings, as from Santiago. Good uh, morning, everyone. It's a great uh, pleasure to see you all here, and especially uh, during this activity that we are organizing as from the FAO, commemorating a very special day, which is uh, the Day of uh, Rural Women. Every day, as from our organization, we also form part uh, of the efforts uh, made by the UN uh, system, and we have been accompanied this morning by several agencies, uh, both face-to-face uh, uh, -face and also uh, using the online uh, format, uh, supporting this event uh, related to rural women. That One of the FAO mandates is uh, to work uh, directly supporting uh, the women's agenda uh, in our region, especially uh, of those of you that experience uh, this and that are every day very close uh, uh, to rural life. Uh, but oh, no, not only that, uh, you are also co-responsible uh, for everything that is uh, related uh, to the transformation of the agri-food system and uh, linked uh, to the transformative uh, power that you all have and also with the superpowers uh, that uh, rural women have, uh, um, as you said, Winnie, and certainly, Winnie, in this region that we love so much, the transformative power of women living in rural areas and also in cities is not only fundamental, but also absolutely necessary at uh, this uh, moment uh, for humanity. What is it that we know of? Uh, in uh, that we know the works that we know here in FAO works uh, considering countries that, that have mobilized efforts uh, that have brought uh, together uh, different efforts and uh, that have uh, brought together different interests and placed uh, uh, around uh, on uh, a reflection on a dialogue table uh, on a decision making uh, table for uh, action 
Uh, how is this related to all the challenges that you have mentioned uh, this morning? Well, we are aware that we need uh, more public policy, so we bring we need to bring uh, women much more to the fore because if women are not present in uh, public uh, records, uh, they are simply not uh, beneficiaries of public policies. We also need women uh, to have a voice and uh, decision-making power in the places where high-level decisions are made in our countries. And and considering rural women, their potential, their leadership, their strength, well, uh, we need to be increasingly capable of uh, promoting and uh, strengthening uh, that uh, ability for you to act as a spoke uh, persons. And um, we are working uh, on that uh, in the FAO to support governments also, so that that public policy is a public policy that falls within the framework of the fundamental needs uh, that you have out uh, in rural areas. We're also working with governments uh, to enter into strategic alliances uh, because we're also aware of this, and that is another lesson that we have learned in the FAO, that uh, alone we won't be successful. One single sector in our public life, one single sector in our countries uh, will not uh, be able to face up uh, to the full challenge involved in the transformation of agri-food systems. As Ben and Maya said recently, and you have uh, confirmed this as a result of your experience, uh, well, we need to transform these agri-food systems. But to transform them, they must be much more inclusive uh, and much more sustainable. Otherwise, they're not useful, and that does not imply the stability and well-being for all of you. As from the FAO, we have entered into that commitment, uh, which involves uh, those alliances, uh, those changes in public policies, and the promotion of new public policies uh, focused and, and targeting uh, the needs of women, and not only in the uh, agricultural sector, but in all aspects related to social protection and uh, the social development of our country. So this is a big task and therefore we cannot undertake it alone. I believe that we all agree on that and uh, that is why, as from the FAO, we are decisively working with the women's organizations in our region. This afternoon, we will listen to the case of many women that are present here and that will present uh, their experiences related uh, to the promotion and the implementation of uh, the agenda of uh, women in our region. We will listen to Red Lac, uh, to Las Margaritas, to civil society organizations uh, with uh, which uh, uh, we are working in partnership uh, jointly so that we can indeed have an impact in uh, these spaces that we need to impact uh, in our countries in order to create a better region. And of course, interagency cooperation and coherence within the UN system is also fundamental. The FAO uh, cannot do this alone. I insist upon that. Uh, last week, we signed a UN uh, and uh, uh, and uh, UNDP and uh, UN Women and the FAO signed an agreement uh, working on different issues and including reproductive health, which are all uh, fundamental issues. And this is an example of how the UN system is uh, making an effort to transform agri-food systems and uh, the commitment on the part of the UN uh, in this sense, I would like to thank all panelists. I would like to uh, give them a very warm hand uh, uh, for these uh, marvelous women that have accompanied us, us today and their life stories and their experiences uh, have a lot uh, um, of wealth. Uh, and that is the pathway for us in Latin America with regards to rural women. We must uh, know we must be much more knowledgeable of those realities and that is why these spaces are fundamental so that you can bring your reality to those of us that are working with public policies and supporting governments that is fundamental and we have a commitment in the fao in that sense so we're also committed to the parliamentary agenda because it's impossible to transform agri-food systems if we don't work uh, with the uh, congresses uh, with our parliaments uh, so that uh, laws uh, so that legislation focuses on your needs, aspects that are as fundamental as uh, 
the, ac uh, the challenge of access to land uh, that we face in Latin America, uh, uh, clear challenges such as connectivity and digitalization, the importance uh, is, is of far stronger work uh, related uh, to these changes uh, that are the result of climate change, uh, some are, that are known to us and others uh, that are yet to be discovered are all fundamental parts of our work. This seems to be the closing remarks, but it is not uh, a closing remark because I have the honor this morning to present uh, the UN campaign, UN Women and uh, the Rights for Women. This is a campaign organized by 32 countries. It is a campaign that is promoted by the rural women in our region, by women's organizations, by governments, by all sectors related to the rights of women in their whole diversity. People ask me, well, what will the seminar deal with? Uh, are we going to, we're, we're going to talk with women, with women that fish. We're also going to be establishing a dialogue with people, with women that work the land, with women that have their own digital ventures uh, connected to the rural world. We will be speaking to rural women and that are developing public policies related to social policy and government, but we will also be talking about uh, care systems because if we continue to exist in a region where women on average um, spend uh, 7.25 hours a week in of an unpaid work uh, and uh, the representative from the dominican republic will probably share a very interesting experience with us well it will be very uh, difficult uh, uh, the, for public policy to operate adequately if they don't uh, determine the need to intervene the number of hours devoted by women to unpaid uh, care work. And uh, in that sense, uh, public policy itself will not be able to make progress. And that is some something that is not new for us. So I have the honor of presenting the eighth version of the campaign, uh, Rural Women, Women with Rights. Uh, uh, there are many of their, many of the organizers are here with us, uh, some of us uh, via streaming and via the connection that we have in our link. I would like to thank uh, all the organizations and governments, uh, the private sector also that forms part of this campaign, uh, because they have all supported the efforts uh, that we have jointly promoted us from the FAO, upholding this campaign now for eight years. And we want you all to be part of this. And that is why you're all here. And that is why you're all important uh, for the FAO. And so I hope that this seminar, that this day of discussions will enrich us all around uh, an issue that uh, we need to continue to reinforce and uh, work in a sustainable uh, fashion and uh, is related to the specific uh, needs of rural women in their whole diversity in Latin America. Now we will show you a video so that you can uh, see the campaign. And uh, once the video is over, we will conclude the live streaming that we have at present. We would like to thank the public that accompanied us uh, this morning in this event here in the FAO. And uh, we hope uh, to meet you again in uh, activities such as these where we establish this uh, joint partnership. Thank you for those uh, that are with us uh, uh, in the live stream and we will continue with this uh, seminar. Now we will have a look at a video. Campaign Rural Women, Women with Rights is a joint and collaborative initiative of international scope promoted by FAO in partnership with 32 government organizations, UN specialized agencies, research and educational centers, and private entities uh, uh, throughout the Latin America and the Caribbean. Since 2016, the regional campaign has functioned as a platform knowledge sharing and cooperation and highlights the situation of rural young indigenous and rural women and Afro descendants in a complex context of inequalities and challenges. In this way, it constitutes a space for political advocacy in favor of the full exercise of rural women's rights in light of the 2030 agenda. This year, the commitments to work together have been renewed. 
the articulation of networks, spaces, and dissemination of knowledge to promote the full autonomy of women in rural areas and thus ensure more resilient agri-food systems, efficient, inclusive, and sustainable, leaving no one behind.